Well, my name's David Campbell. I was born in Edinburgh, but very shortly afterwards, by the time I was five, I was in the North East. And so now I'm a storyteller. I suppose I have been all my life. But uh, I'm going to tell you a story if, from the language of the North East. Well, you see, now, there was a lot of fisher folk in the North East, and uh, you can, uh, there was half a holy folk these years. And uh, this skipper was one a man for his booty. There was a young man that was short, you can. And so he interviewed all sorts of folk for that. And uh, along came this loon, and he says to him, no, he says, uh, uh, do, we, uh, do we smoke? He says, uh, do we smoke? He says, oh, he says, no, no, no. He says, I don't smoke it, ta, ta, ta. He'd never touch it at all. He says, uh, really, for the boot, uh, for the boot drink? Oh, no, he says, I wouldn't touch it. That's a devil's thing. I'd have to give it. No, no, I wouldn't have had drink at all. And he says, um, uh, well, uh, for the boot, the uh, quinies, the lassies? Oh, he says, I've been married all my days. He says, I'm in love with my wife and that kind of thing. He says, uh, so, uh, uh, no, no, that's the way it is. Oh, well, says the skipper. That's just grand, that's just grand all together. So uh, they went out on the fishing and, uh, and uh, as they get out, it was an awful, awful like storm come up. And uh, the storm got worse and worse and worse. And the rest of the crew, and they were all folk that drank a lot and they smoked a lot and they was half uh, fond of the women he came. But, uh, the, when the storm got up, there was all that kind of water coming onto the booty. And uh, this, uh, this uh, half a greed man that does not smoke or drink or get a boot with women, he got the bucket and he was just tucking the uh, water, putting it over the side, when a great wave came over and swept it, the man and the, bo oh, and the bucket over the side. And then you know the other crew come up and says, real skipper, that half a holy man was bad luck. He said, well, with a bucket. <laughs> and whether you understand that or not, it basically he said the holy man has stolen our bucket. So I, I'm, I'll tell you a story. I'm very fond of the old Celtic stories. So just to give you a sense of standard Scots, the way I speak anyhow, I'll tell you this story. There was a time when the high king of Erin and Alba, that's Scotland and Ireland, was looking for a runner to see if any foot had invaded the shores of these Celtic kingdoms. And ultimately, there were only three contestants. Carnar from Brittany, Toramid from Scotland, and a man called Colcha, who was the great champion of the Fianna, which was a great Celtic group of heroes. Now, it was said that Carnar could take a running hop, step and jump from Brittany to Cornwall to Cork before the sun rose. And it was said that Toramid from Scotland was so swift that he had to run any race on his hands to give the others any chance. And it was said that culture, the great Celtic hero could run so fast that he did not even bend the tips of the blades of grass as he ran. And so the high king said to Carnar, how swiftly can you run to the sands of the north, the sands of the south, the sands of the west and the sands of the east to see if any stranger's foot has been on our kingdom. And Carnar said, as quickly as a, a leaf will fall from a tree, not fast enough, said the High King. And then he said to Toramid, How quickly can you run to the sands of the north, the sands of the south, the sands of the west, the sands of the east, to see if any stranger has put his foot on our land? And he said, As quickly as a cat will slip between the walls of two houses. He said, Not fast enough. Then he said to Culture, the great hero of the Celtic band of brotherhood. He said, 
How quickly can you run to the sands of the north, the sands of the south, the sands of the west, and the sands of the east, to see if the foot of any stranger has been on our land? And he said, as quickly as a woman will change her mind. Mm, said the king. When will you go? I have already returned, said Kocha. And that's it. <laughs> There you go. So that's, um, these are um, a, two modes of speech in Scotland. I mean, the northeast is much affected by the connection they have to the lands of Norway and Sweden. And they, for instance, the word what would be fit. Uh, fit is that. What's that? Far are you going? Where are you going? And uh, there's a funny story told by a um, um, uh, BBC announcer from Aberdeen who spoke the Doric and he went skiing. Now he, he, and he looked at his feet and he says, aye, but fit, fit, fits, fit, fit, which translated into English is, yes, but which foot fits which foot? Because fit is what and fit is foot in the Doric. So fit, fit, fits, fat, fit, was a, it's told as a wee joke. So um, anyhow, these are the languages I had at school. It was uh, the Doric you spoke or you would not survive. And the outside in your, in the house of my mother and father who came from a different parts of Scotland, you spoke a kind of standard English. So there you are. <laughs>